Welcome back to The Painting Coach. In this tutorial, we are painting the winner of the community vote, Radikar the Wolf from Curse City. If this is your first time on the channel or you haven't already done so and you want to learn how to paint your Warhammer minis, pick up loads of cool tips and tricks, as well as find out about a range of other models, then please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell so you're notified of all my latest videos. All right, so it's Radhika the Wolf time. Let's get going. So I built the model. I've primed it with black and then I've primed it, primed it with gray over the top. That's just to make it a little bit easier when it comes to, to painting some of the gray. So the first thing we're gonna do, I wanna get that wolf pelt kind of whitened up. So I'm taking some Corax white um, and I'm gonna just be very messy with this. And you can see this is why I'm doing it first. So just paint all of the wolf pelt with the Corax white. So you get a nice even coverage. Uh, you could do a little bit of the hat as well because that lends itself well to how we're going to be doing this model. Don't worry if you get it on the skin or anything like that, but just get all the wolf done and we'll come back and we'll move on to the, the next colours. So what we'll do next, we'll just take some of bad and black and we'll start to block in some of these darker areas. So we've got the outside of the cloak here. Just be careful when you come up to those bits that you've already finished with that Corax white. Obviously you can see the Corax white has brightened the model up quite a bit there. So we've got the boots as well, and if you're not sure which bits are which, just check the check the box art. It's fairly straightforward. Let's get that done. We've got this scabbard here as well. I've already painted it because the uh, the video didn't record first time round, so that's my bad. But there we are. Get all that done, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll highlight it next. So to start highlighting the black, now there's a couple of a couple of black areas. So we've got the boots and we've got the, the cloak there, but we've also got the scabbard, the beard, and this kind of bit here as well. So different kind of textures. So what I'm going to start off with is doing the boots and the cloak. And the first highlight for this is going to be Stegadon scale green. And what we're looking for is we're just looking where that light catches. Just, you know, some of those harder edges on the kind of the top of the foot there, nice and simple. On the boots and then when we flip it around we look at the the cloak we're just looking for those big sweeping areas there where we've got them and then where we've not got them we'll just put a line along those sharpest raised areas just like that so work your way around get all that highlighted and then we'll come back in and we'll do the next little highlight for the boots and the cloak once we're happy with that we're going to take some thunderhawk blue and we're just going to use this on the kind of the most raised areas, the sharpest parts. And make sure when you do paint it on, paint it inside that staggered on scale green. It'll just give you that sharper highlight. And then when it comes to the, the cloak, if we've got a, a nice long line like that, we can just run the brush along it and that gives us a really nice sharp highlight. So get that done all over, make sure you're happy with it, and then we'll come back and we'll do the other black highlights next. The next bit of black, which just what we just want to make it look like there's a different kind of texture. Just gonna use some Mechanica standard grey. So I'm gonna use this on the, the kind of the beard. And don't worry, we'll do proper work on that later. It's just because we've got that paint out. And then also this kind of bit here, we just want to highlight it, but just with a kind of like a stabby stippling type motion. There's not much of it, it's a very small piece and most of it will be that shiny metal there, but I think it'll just help to, to highlight it and make it pop. And then also the, the kind of the handle on the dagger. All I'm gonna do is just some horizontal lines like that, just simulating like a tape or wrap or something around there. So that's the black done. And we'll jump onto the green next. To base the cloak and the cuff, uh, of the jacket. First off, we're going to use some Caliban green, which um, will cover. You're going to need to use two coats on on here, so I'm not too concerned about painting over this little um, design, which is going to be gold. Uh, but just get that done with the Caliban green. Two coats on there, and obviously, don't forget to paint the uh, the inside of the cloak. So I'm just find the best way to show you that. There. So take your time around those bits you've already finished. Get a nice even coat and then we'll come back and we'll start to highlight it. 
To highlight the green, we're going to use War Boss Green. It's kind of a less saturated green than perhaps what we'd normally use to highlight something like Caliban Green. And what we're looking to do is just catch those edges where we can. And obviously paint it up where we're catching the light there. So work your way around. Um, when it comes to the, the kind of the cloak here, we've got some creases that we just want to highlight and work our way down towards the bottom. So work your way around, get all that done when, when you're happy with it. If you make a mistake, just paint back over it with some Caliban Green. And then we'll come back for the final highlight. For the last highlight, we're just going to use a little bit of Scarsnet Green, which is a much yellower green. And what we're looking to do is just catch this on the sharpest edges, making sure that we're inside that War Boss Green, just to add that kind of brighter effect. And then when it comes to the inside, again, we're just looking for a thinner colour. So when you're happy with that, we're done. We move on to the trousers next. So for basing the trousers, we're going to use some um, Mephiston Red. I forgot what it's blinking called then for a minute. Uh, and this is really straightforward. All we're doing is we're just going to cover all over all the trousers. Obviously being careful around those areas we've already finished. So nice and simple. You should be able to cover it in one coat, but don't put it on too thick if it's not going to take. So it's a little bit light there. I'll put a second coat on. So work your way around, get a nice solid base coat of fist and red, and then we'll shade it next. So we're going to shade that with uh, some Nalm oil. I don't want too much on your brush, but just paint it over all of the fist and red that you've uh, pop down make sure it gets into those recesses but just be mindful when you kind of if you stand the model up like that then it's going to obviously pool at the bottom we want to darken the whole thing down so we do want to put enough on but we want to avoid that pooling so if you do notice it happening anywhere just like i've got a little bit there clean your brush and then wick it away nice and easy so get that done let it dry and then we'll come back and uh, we'll highlight up these trousers. And I just will apologies if there's any uh, interference on the sound. It seems like people are using the road outside as a racetrack today. So it's a little bit noisy out there. So apologies for that. But we'll see you for the highlights next. Let's come back and highlight this red then. And we're going to go straight back into Mephiston Red. And essentially what we're looking to do is brighten up big areas of the trousers leaving that kind of darker color in the recesses but by doing it this way we'll have a it won't be such a harsh transition so we're not looking to do like line highlights here because that's quite harsh uh, and as i'm painting those kind of more raised areas i'm just adding a little bit extra on as well so it just it'll just brighten the whole thing up so just work your way around it's a nice simple stage and then we'll add another highlight next We'll finish off highlighting the uh, the trousers with some Evil Sun Scarlet. So I thinned it down a little bit. Um, and essentially what I'm going to do, very similar to that last step, just aiming for those kind of raised creases. Shooting for the middle, really. And what you'll find is that when it dries, it'll blend in quite nicely with uh, what's underneath to get you a as natural as possible fold without um, without doing a lot of blending so um, have a look at that let it dry and then when we come back we might add just a tiny tiny little extreme highlight to make it pop so that color I'm going to use to make it pop is a little bit of Kislev flesh now you can see it's much lighter than the red so make sure you've got hardly any on your brush and we just want this on those kind of sharpest areas and it's ever so slight amount just working it on there and if you put too much on or you feel that it's too much you can just go back to that evil sun scarlet and just 
paint over it or thin it down. Now, whilst we've got the Kislev flesh, the other thing I want to do is I want to paint all the skin. So we'll do the skin next. So you can see it's quite thin. It's not covering very well, but two coats of this Kislev flesh should go over that skin fairly nicely. If you need a third coat, then just go ahead and do the third coat. Just be careful around these areas we've already finished. And then we'll uh, get to work on the skin in earnest in the next stage. Once you've got that base of Kislev flesh, you just want to take some flayed one flesh uh, and basically just paint this over all the raised areas. Now, don't worry if you get some of it into the recesses, that's fine. Well, we just want to get a nice even coverage using the uh, the flayed one flesh. So it should cover pretty okay in, in one coat, but if we need another one, just pop it in and then we'll come back and we'll shade it down next. The colour I'm going to use to shade the skin is a Thony and Camo shade, but I'm not going to use it to flood the mini. What I'm looking to do is just tint the skin using the Athonian Camo shade. And you can see there, it just gives it a, a kind of greeny tinge. And that's what we want. Because if you look at the box art, the obviously Radikar's an undead vampire. So he's not exactly the picture of health when it comes to his skin color. It's quite pallid. Um, and I'll show you how to do that next uh, as we work our way around. I just want to use this Athonian camo shade to to kind of just make some definition and define some points before I come back in and brighten it up. When that's dry, uh, we're just going to jump back to this Kislev flesh, uh, not Kislev, sorry, the flayed one flesh, and just to pick up those kind of most raised areas again, just to keep adding that texture to the skin. And on the face as well, it's a bit difficult to show on cam. Uh, make sure we're in focus. Uh, so get that done, and then we'll come back and we'll continue the highlighting uh, in the next step. So the colour we're going to use for those final highlights is Pallid Witch Flesh. So make sure you've got a good point on your brush. And what we're looking to do, just catch those most raised areas there on things like the hand. And obviously the face as well, so just highlighting the nose. And then when it comes to the chest, it's a nice big open area that we can highlight. And we'll go back in and we'll we'll fill those scars in, or the wound in, later on. So get that done until you're happy with it, and then we'll come on and we move on to the leather next. So we've got some big chunky leather on the belt, um, and we'll do this quite simply. So we'll base it with... Um, dryad bark to start. Now I've thinned this down a little bit um, so it may take a couple of coats just to cover but just take your time work it on and then we'll come back and highlight it in the next step. To highlight this leather I'm going to take some Gawthor Brown so I've got it there on the palette and, and what I'm looking to do is I'm just looking for these kind of edges and I'm just I'm just stippling the Gawthor brown on because this is kind of like a, in my mind, it's kind of like an older leather, so it's not going to be sharp highlights. It's going to be quite worn. So do that all over. And then what I'm going to do is, if you have a look at the palette, I'm going to take this pallid witch flesh and I'm going to just take some and just mix up a lighter tone of that Gawthor brown. Again, make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. And I'm just going to give an additional highlight, stippling this kind of lighter colour on there. Just like that, on the kind of the more prominent edges. And that will give you a nice, worn leather look. So once you get that done, once you're happy, uh, we'll come back. And I think we're at the point where we're going to start the metallics. So the first metal colour we'll do is the gold. So we're starting off with some Balthazar gold here. Now I'm just going to do base the Balthazar gold and then base the silver because I'm going to shade them using the, the same colour. So it, there's a fair bit of Balthazar gold to do. So we've got the, the sword hilt and the, the pommel. We've got the design there. 
the wolf design on the, the jacket. Now we've also got this bit here on the belt. So if you're not sure, just check the box art and then copy that and that should make sure you get everything. So we've got the bits on this dagger here as well. We've got that design on the chest to do. So work your way around, get it done, get it nice and base coated and then when we come back we'll uh, we'll make a start on, on the silver. For the silver we'll just use some iron hand steel and what we're going to do with this, we're going to paint the sword so again, nice even coverage there. And then we've also got these um, kind of bits of armour underneath. So just take your time, be careful not to uh, make any mistakes over anything you've already finished. And then we'll come back and uh, we will shade all of those metallics. Now I'm going to wash both colours with some non oil. Uh, and again, I don't want it to pool too much. So I'm just going to keep working it around. Obviously being careful of those areas I've already finished. Just work it in there, especially into those kind of bits underneath where it will cast some shadow. And then once that's done, let it dry and we'll come back and we'll start the uh, start the highlight process next. Remember, this is the silver and the gold. To highlight the gold, and I just want to give it a you know a worn, rusted old gold look. Can use some Sycorax bronze, Sycorax, whatever you like. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to just catch those top edges with the gold, or of the gold, I should say, with Sycorax bronze. One of the things I am quite mindful of is the amount of paint I'm using. I know people make comments on, on my videos occasionally about the amount of paint I use. Um, you can, of course, mix your own paint with, you know, to, to cut down the amount of colours that you use if you're confident to do that. But what I try and do is I try and make sure that my videos are accessible for for everyone and it's straightforward for everyone and that's why i use lots of different uh colors of paint now hopefully if you've got this dude then you're going to have the entire box of cursed city so in terms of the color scheme for the whole of the box it's not going to be too different especially for the enemies in cursed city so Actually, these paints that I'm using on Radicar, you're actually going to use on, on all the other bad guys as well. So hopefully that's uh, you can see that and understand the reason I use so many different paint colours. So I like the silver. Uh, so we've got the sword and those kind of little bits of plate metal armour. Taking chrome from Vallejo Model Air. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for all those sharp edges that we've got along there and just run the brush along nice and simple so work your way around the model do exactly that get yourself a nice highlight and then we'll come back in and we'll start to work on the fur and all that the first bit of fur we'll do nice and easy is the hat and for this I'm using wildwood contrast paint so just get it on there and spread it out and when it dries you'll find that you've got yourself a nice kind of brown color to match the box art. So get that done, let it dry, and then I think we'll come back in and we'll have a look at some of the uh, rust effect on the sword next. Let's have a look at the rust effect on the sword then, and the colour I'm going to use is Gullum and Flesh Contrast Paint. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of stabbing it and stippling it onto the, the blade around the kind of like the corroded areas. Then what I'll do is clean my brush off and then I'll just push away some of that paint so it just blends in. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm probably going to just focus it along those corroded areas a bit more. Now the other thing you can do whilst you've got the Gullman Flesh on the go is you can just pick up some of these the bits on the wolf, so the kind of the pads on the paw, the inside of where Obviously, it's been skinned as well, so you just pick that up very lightly. And then um, once that's done, we'll come back. And I think we're in a place to start the wolf in earnest before we do the finishing touches. Let's move on to the wolf then. So we're going to use Space Wolves Grey Contrast Paint. We're going to mix this in a ratio of 2 to 1. 2 parts contrast medium, 1 part Space Wolves Grey Contrast Paint. And what we're looking to do is we're just going to work it on to this wolf fur. 
Now we don't want it kind of settling too much in the recesses. What we're looking for it to do is we're just looking to colour the wolf. So work your way around, get it covered with uh, with one coat, and then when we come back, we'll reassess the situation. As that starts to dry, we can have a look at where we want to kind of reinforce this. So using the same mix of uh, contrast and Space Wolves Grey, there's things like we want to, down the kind of the snout there, we want to add that shadow, make sure it works its way into the eyes, the nose a little bit as well. And when it dries, it'll blend in quite nicely, which is what we want. And the other, the other place we want to have an effect, if you look at the box, if you look at the, the art, the kind of this the spine of the door of the wolf rather is a bit is a bit darker so just want to use the space walls gray in there just to kind of enhance that a little bit and again it'll blend down so work your way around doing that and then we'll come back and we'll start to lighten that up again all right so we're into the home stretch a little bit now we're not uh, too far away so i'm going back to corax white i put some fresh on my palette because i all up of water fell onto uh, the one I already had and then just made it super diluted. So what we're looking to do is just I'm going to pick out some of these sharpest areas like the the ears along the lines of the scars. We'll paint them kind of last as well on the snout here. As for how I painted the, um, the nose that's just a bad and black with a little bit of Mechanicus grey. So just working your way around the, the wolf fur, just adding some colour. And then when it comes to the, the bits of fur, just try and catch as many as you can. Now if you don't want to do it this way, if you don't want to do it just with the brush like this, then you can just give it a light dry brush, which will be a lot quicker. But you may end up with just kind of like a bit more texture that you don't really want on there. So work your way around, get all that done, and we come back with the final highlight and we'll start to do the... Um, the preparation work for all the kind of red bits as well. So same tactics again, <clears throat> excuse me, except this time we're using white scar. Uh, we want to paint inside any scarring. So we've got this on the wolf and we've got the bits on the chest as well. And then what we want to do is we want to look and catch those kind of most raised parts of the wolf just to get a nice highlight. So we've got the ears, we've got the bits of fur that kind of go off around the model. So just work your way around, get all that done. And the other thing to do as well is to get this white scar into the eyes of Radicar. Now, I'm gonna try and do this on camera. It's always very difficult. So there's one, I've got some on the hat, which I'll need to go and tidy up. But I'll do the other one off cam. And then when we come back, we'll put the red into there. So the color we're gonna use for all this is Karaburg Crimson. And what we're going to do is we're just going to drop that into the scars. So nice and easy. As that dries, it should give you some of that, uh, some of the effect that you can see on the box art where it's a little bit lighter in the middle. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the eyes, which again, I'm going to try and show you on camera, but it could be difficult. So I'm just going to paint those eyes with the Caribou Crimson, let that dry and I might dot the white. I'm just going to make sure to do these with the Caribou Crimson as well. So there we have it, Radicar the Wolf is done, he's ready for the table, I'm going to base him up now, uh, paint that rim black and we'll have a look at him on the turntable next. So there we have it, Radikar the Wolf is done and he is ready to beat the heroes as they try and take back the cursed city of Ulfenkarn. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have then please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me make sure I'm creating the kind of content that you guys want to see. If you would like to support me and the channel you can do so using the links in the description. There's the link for my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me via my Discord as well as some exclusive content and a monthly live frequently asked questions session. There's a link for Goblin Gaming where you can get up to 20% off all your wargaming needs and also help me out with no extra cost to yourself. And there's also my Amazon links with my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.